Hello, Mr. Barton here, and welcome to another exciting episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week, where, I mean, you know how this works by now, every week I treat you to a lovely GCSE Maths question that's hopefully going to help you prepare for the demands of your GCSE Maths exam. Now this week we've got an old classic. We've got circles, we've got angles, what's it got to be? Got to be circle theorems. This has been provided by AQA. But it's flipping hard, let me tell you now. Right, the diagram shows a circle with center O. Okay, I'm happy with that bit. The line PS is a tangent to the circle. Now that's going to be important. And immediately your mind should start to think, what do I know about tangents when it comes to circle theorems? So my, my mind is immediately thinking, let's just jot this down whilst we're here. I know two things. I know one about right angles. But, oh, flip it. I don't know what that letter is there. There it is, right angles. Um, I know that, but to, uh, for tangents and right angles, I need a radius. And I don't have a radius there, so it's probably not going to be that one. What's the other thing I know about tangents? I know the alternate segment theorem. Alternate segment theorem. That's going to be probably the one we need here because that doesn't rely on tangents, that relies on chords. So that's probably going to come into play. So immediately my mind's thinking, right, okay, there won't, there won't be a tangent probably unless we're going to need to use it. So that's going to come into play. Calculate angle PQS. Now, if you don't know which angle PQS is, you're not going to get this question right. So let's take our time on this. P to Q to S. Start at P, go to Q, go to S. Label on the angle that we need. So all we've got to do is work out that angle. Now, you will be tempted, as I am, to do something here, but resist. The temptation is to make, label one of those angles as something. Can you see it? I'd love to write a 38 there. I'd flipping love it. And then I'd have done this question in no time. But is there any evidence that that's an isosceles triangle? Are there any markings on these sides? No. Is there any theorem that says P, and P to Q and Q to S have to be the same? No. If you assume that is 38, I'll just show you where this goes here because this will save us a little bit of time later on. If we assume that's 38, then what we end up doing is we say we do 180 degrees, we take off 38, we take off another 38, and we end up with 104 degrees, and we end up thinking the answer is C. C is the most common wrong answer because there is no evidence that is 38 degrees. So we can't do that. So I know what you're thinking, what the flipping heck are we going to do? Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to make use of this alternate segment theorem. So the alternate segment theorem says when you've got a tangent and it meets a chord. So a chord is just a line that goes from one side to the circle to the other. It doesn't have to go through the center. Then the angle that that tangent makes with the chord, so in this case 38 degrees, is equal to the angle in the alternate segment from that chord. So I think it was the angle kind of opposite the chord. That's how I've, I've always kind of thought of it. So that angle here is 38 degrees. Now, does that help us a little bit? Well, not really, because we're nowhere near that flipping angle just yet, are we? But wait a minute. Can we spot something else? Can you see how Q to R goes through the diameter of this circle? So we've actually got another circle theorem here. When we've got an angle, go, uh, a line, sorry, going through the diameter, so when we've got the diameter of a circle, this angle down here at the bottom, and let's treat myself to a bit of pink for this. This angle down here at the bottom is 90 degrees. What's the reason for that? Angles in a semicircle are 90. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm being a little bit lazy here. I'm not writing down each of these individual steps because it's not asked me to, but it may well do so in the exam. So just make sure 38 was alternate segment theorem. That one there, QSR is angles in a semicircle. Are we anywhere near our flipping answer yet? Well, we're honing in on it, right? Because now I reckon we're in a position to work out this lovely little angle there. Because now we've just got angles in a triangle. I'll tell you what, I'm going to be lazy because it's let me use a calculator, so I might as well use it. Bring him on here. So we know that we've got 180 degrees in a triangle. We'll take off our 90 degrees, which was our right angle. We'll take off our 38 degrees, which we got from angles in the same segment, and we end up with 52 degrees. So that angle there is 52. Now, wait a minute. 52 is one of my answers. So this is flipping unlucky, right? I reckon that student's worked out everything, got that up to be 52, but still not quite got the right answer because that's not the angle that we're asked to work out. We are asked to work out the size of P to Q to S. So we're as good as there now, right? Because we've got angles on a straight line, 180 degrees, take off me 52 degrees. 
I'm going to take a gamble and try and do this without a calculator. I reckon that's 128 degrees, which is angle answer, sorry, B there with that one. Whew, a load of flipping work comes into play. Well, no, good news is we've kind of covered off a lot of the bits I normally do midway through this. Let's just get this bit. Where does 142 come from? Well, this is an interesting one, this. I often see this in students, temptations to combine parallel line angle facts with this. Can you see how you might be tempted to think that angle there is 38 degrees? Can you see how you've almost got like a Z angle here? But it's not a Z angle, right? Because there's nothing saying that QR and PS are parallel to each other, which we'd need for Z angles or alternate angles. But if you thought that was the case, you'd end up thinking that's 38 and therefore doing 180 take 38 and ended up with 142. But that is not quite the right answer. Whew, load of flipping work going on here. Um, other wrong answers that could come into play? I could see 38 degrees, to be honest with you. I could see 38 for a couple of reasons, messing it up, thinking it's an isosceles and thinking uh, that angle there's 38. Or I could see it, what about this? Say you've worked out that that angle there's 38, then all of a sudden you're thinking not of alternate angles, but you're thinking of um, corresponding angles, F-shape angles. And you end up thinking that's 38, but you'd be flipping mad with yourself if you thought of that. I'm also thinking maybe some students may say 90 just because they see the word tangent and think, right, let's say it must be um, angles in a tangent, must be 90 degrees. Or they see this 90 degrees here and think flipping alternate angles with that. All kinds of stuff. But look, let me say to you this. Don't assume anything. Don't assume lines are equal uh, to each other and therefore triangles are isosceles unless you've got a good reason to do so. Make sure you know all your circle theorems and look for keywords. If it said a tangent, it's probably going to be something to do with 90 degrees or it's going to be alternate segment theorem. Label on angles you know and justify it with reasons and just build your way slowly but steadily around to the angle that you've been asked to work out and you'll be fine. But look, everyone finds circle theorems hard. So if you need some help, harp on mrbartonmaths.com, Google circle, uh, not Google, look up circle theorems on the topic page or follow the link in this video. Get them flipping revised and please, please, please try the rest of this quiz out. It tests every aspect of circle theorems. It is a classic. And I'll see you for another question of the week next week. Take care. Bye for now.